Hi guys, my name is Marcel and I have returned in order to hit you guys with some knowledge. Specifically, knowledge about color. Color is such a fascinating topic. For example, have you considered that instead of just using the base form of every color, there are cold and warm variations of every single color that you could use? So what? Like, for real, who cares if your character as a warmer or a colder red shirt. Oh, okay, yeah, I get that you might not understand that at first. But trust me, there's one specific color. That one damn color. So many of your messages contain artworks where you are flat out misusing it. And I'm going to prove it. By the way, have you subscribed to this channel yet? Okay then, enough talking. Let's finally take a look at it. The hardest color to paint with. Like a surf. In case you didn't catch on yet, we are going to talk about the color green. And the best example artwork here would be my painting from last year. I painted it for my calendar, specifically the month of June. And now in order to prove my point, let's apply the green color like someone who has no idea about color theory. Uh, yeah, I think you get my point. And the green really is the worst offender with this. If I were to change the hue or saturation of the skin tones, it wouldn't be that bad. And just like the person in the beginning said, who cares if your shirt has a slightly different hue? Even if you get the blue colors in the sky wrong, literally nobody would bat an eye at that. But with green, misusing this color immediately makes the artwork look more amateurish, at least in my opinion. Now, in case you have no idea about color theory, I'll just give you a crash course to enlighten you where the problem exactly lies and how you'd correctly do this. Doesn't matter if you are painting traditionally or on a tablet. When it comes to shading and highlighting, you do not just use white to get brighter and black to get darker. That's like beginner mistake number one. That's something I'm even explaining in my absolute beginner videos about coloring because it's so incredibly important and so many people still do it. Instead of a shading with black or highlighting with white, I'm approaching it like this. A brighter parts are going to be more yellow because Obviously, they are being hit by the sun, while the darker parts are looking more bluish, obviously because of the lack of sunlight in these spots. And if you are taking a look at my July artwork, you will see that this is precisely the way that I've colored everything in this picture. Also, if you actually paid attention while watching this video so far, you noticed that this is exactly what I told you in the beginning. Utilizing warmer and colder versions of an art piece is absolute key in order to make artworks like these. And you will need them in a lot of scenarios too. For example, how artists are just flat out painting blue shadows of aerial perspective is also such a good example. Almost only absolute beginners would be shading with pure black or grey colors in an otherwise colored artwork. And this goes for everything, doesn't matter if you're painting landscapes or simply some anime artworks. Color works the same almost every time. Except in JoJo's. So yeah, if you take a look at my artwork here, everything that's shaded and everything in the back has a bluish hue to it, while all the highlighted parts in the front have a brighter, warmer yellow hue. And things like pure white are something you could use very sparsely just to highlight some parts. Now, I know things like these are a bit easier to learn from when you're using a simpler example, so let's take something very easy that everyone can follow along with. Like this artwork, for example. Uh, and yeah, I know it's an artwork for children, so putting these next to each other is like a color theory version of Carthing Baby versus Hydrogen Bomb. But like I said, you understand these things better with simpler artworks, at least in my opinion. So I'm not making fun of anything here. If anything, I want to show you guys just how much more realistic you could color if you just knew about how to apply color theory. We're using exactly what I told you before. To be precise, your regular green hue, your warmer green, and obviously your colder green. 
Let's erase all of the green from this artwork and do this together. And we need a direction the sun is coming from, so let's imagine the sun right over here. The green parts that are facing the sun are the highlighted parts. So, just like I told you, this is where we use the warmer green since it's directly illuminated by the sun. For simplicity's sake, you could say that the rest of this artwork isn't being that strongly illuminated, so let's just take your regular green hue for the rest. And lastly, the cold green hue is for the shadowy darker parts, because that's where the least sunlight hits. I think this kind of approach was easy enough to understand for everyone, but you could now step it up a notch and stack this if you want to. So at the very top of the trees, your green hues could get even brighter and warmer, and the shadowy parts could get even darker and colder. And now if you could apply all of this to a simple drawing like this, just Imagine what kind of potential you could have if you'd use this knowledge on a more detailed artwork. The possibilities here are truly endless. This is just how incredible color theory can be, because what happened in this video is a part of color theory called color context. Shadows in real life obviously aren't flat out blue, but it's just the fact that the yellow sunlight makes the shadow appear blue in contrast. Phenomena like color context and aerial perspective are something that I'm explaining in detail in my previous video on color theory, which I am very proud of, by the way, and I'd be very glad if you were to check it out if you haven't already. Okay, if you understood all of this so far, you're good to go, obviously, but I thought you might want to see a little step-by-step -step guide on how to apply all of this with a more detailed artwork in real time. So if you want to apply this yourself, be it like digitally or with actual paint, I have a little bonus step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do this in a more advanced way. But uh, I, I would appreciate if you liked this video first, just to show your support and stuff. <sighs> All of this was a lot of work, believe me. Alright, I'll just assume you left a like, so I'll give you a quick step-by-step -step on how I'm using color theory on my detailed artworks. My example will be this calendar artwork for the month of April. I think there are some awesome examples to show you how I applied this technique here. You have one green part where the sun directly hits the plants, and one part where you have more of a shadowy space. Now let's go for the easy example first. Now, quick rundown again. The sun hits the plants, so they obviously get highlighted with some bright yellowish green. And after that, you're getting darker and darker. Nothing new to see here. That's the easy example just so you could see how to actually paint this. And before someone asks, I'm using gouache colors in this example, so if you want to read into which brushes or paper or colors I'm using, it's all linked in my supply list on my website. But what if your greens are not directly hit by the sunlight? How would you paint them in this case? Now, that's the trickier scenario, but it's easier than you might think. Less sun obviously means less yellow bright hues. So let's shift all of the hues away from yellow just a tiny bit. And now let's give these shadowy tones a shot. I'm starting with the brightest part, as I often like to do, in order to at least shape the area that I'm painting a bit. And next up, I'm adding the darker part. Also, I like to blend those two layers a bit, just by letting some of the darker grass grow a bit taller. You know, just because I think that makes it look a lot more organic. Now, thing is, without an actual light source lighting this part up, this part looks kind of boring. That's why, while planning this artwork, I planned in some bounce light. So that's why this artwork isn't just illuminated from above, but also from below. And yes, that's actually how this works. It sounds unreal, but light really can be used in interesting ways sometimes. So yeah, that's why I'm also adding some subtle blue bounce light for the greenery from below. You can't really add things like these with mediums like markers or colored pencils in the very same way, so that's why I stopped using them and switched over to gouache and watercolor. And obviously, if you're using digital art, this works just as well. You know, because digitally you can just paint it over. And voila, that's a more advanced way to paint brighter and more shadowy greeneries for your landscape. Also, if you want to read more into this whole bounce light, highlight and shading thing, you can check out this video I made about that very topic. It's kind of old now, but I think it's still very useful. 
Now, if you want to read more into the topic of colors and how to use them, or just want to look at some pictures I painted, I would really appreciate if you would check out my calendar or the making of magazine I made for it. They are available right now on my online shop at drawlikeaser.com. Some of these artworks took me like several streams to finish. I'm really happy with them. Well done, thanks for watching and happy painting.